Hello everyone, this is Xander Duron and I am back with the first Dutch Exceptional Tournament. And we're in the finals now, round one of the finals, because this is double elimination. Because of course. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, so, start us off. On the blue team, we have General Belanger with a NATO General deck. And on the red team, we have Putin187 with a blue mechanized. And let's just speed right through that deployment. Bit of a longer one. There we go. Alright, starting off with blue. Two command start, obviously. Let's see, leopard two. It's pretty great. If it had medium optics, it'd be pretty... It'd be a lot better, but even as it is, it's good enough for 80 points. Besides from that, we got... It's going to be, I think Belanger is using Rima 85 in his D20s. Then you have Commando Para, VBL Mistral. I've already voiced my opinion on it, it's just, it's not particularly good. And over here you got Mortar, oh, 10RC, 10RC, oh look more 10RC. Some more Rima I do believe, that's Upvetted Jaeger I do believe. Mistral. Ooh, and a Leclerc. That's interesting. It looks like Belanger is maybe doing an India push. As for Putin, got a. Starting off with the recon helicopter. That's M113A3, so that's Rifleman. Shumat. Oop. Camera jumping. Tenor C, of course. Felskamiegre. And. Uh, what should we call them? Those dudes. The guys, the things, the Fusilier 90. So that's probably just going to be a holding force for India. And it looks like Putin's going to be probably going to do an alpha push. And then to that end, we have two CVs. Yep. Grand Infantry there. 10 RC. Rifleman. Get Panzer. Flak Panzer. Get Part A1. There we go. I personally like this one quite a bit. It's sometimes a bit. Compared to the base gap, it's sometimes too expensive in the opener. You know, having that 10 point difference between the two can sometimes make a difference in whether or not you can afford it. But the A1's still pretty nice. You know, the 30% stabilizer really helps. Anyway, we got more riflemen, more fusiliers, M1 Abrams. It's the M1 Abrams. It's pretty decent. You know, this gun's a bit anemic, but it has a lot of armor. So that's from there, we've got KFE 25 or so, Chung Su 85. More riflemen, Chumat, another A Gepard, some commando, and a mortar. So yeah, it definitely looks like Putin's going to be doing an alpha push. So now we're going opposite of each other. It'd be interesting to see how that turns out for them. These guys decided to go off road for a bit. Oh, 10 RC is going to be driving right down along there, maybe. Surprised that there's no uh, gazelle coming out from Boulanger. It's a, such a handy helicopter. Does he even have it in this deck? I can't remember him using it in the previous battles with it. I'm pretty sure he has him. And he does have the FOB. Putin does not. Oh, an RBS 56 coming out. Interesting. Oh, Putin probably saw all the vehicles over here at this helicopter. Is that very good optics? Yes, it is. So he's probably going to go, hmm, might need some stuff. Oh, 10 RC. Okay, so that is empty. This just keeps going. 
RC over there. Looks like that's going to head down to the top, maybe? Into Delta. Oh, 10 RC stopped there. Does, I guess Poom doesn't want them getting too far ahead of each other. I don't know. Yeah, a few series 90 won't be able to hold against that. Yeah, Putin's. Putin's just camping up in India. You know, set up, try and hold there. Would explain these guys. Ooh. Putin's aim extender RC gets the first hit. And now they're running away from each other. That one's trying to run away. So the, I guess this sort of makes sense, the 9040s with the RBS-56 for the situation. You don't have a lot of long range depending on where the Leclerc comes from and other vehicles. So, and it's decently powerful. It's not the greatest ATIGM though. It tends to get panicked before it can hit because how because it's easier to spot. It has less stealth than the two-man team because it's a five-man team. But the uh, SRF 9040 is uh, pretty good at wrecking light armor. You know, things like the 10RC. Well, and this 10RC just keeps getting good hits. Ooh. Oh, but that guy... It's panic versus that guy being shaken. That's interesting. Oh, and this... And then, yep, here comes Putin. Oh, that bat's gonna have a bad day. Putin's just going all in. Ooh, but that Leopard 2 could be trouble for him. Oh, but there's the H1Js, has rockets, so it could do some decent work. And the fact that the M113A3s are leading the way means that they're just going to absorb a bunch of gunfire. And there's no AA immediately. Oh, yep, there's a mis the Mistral there. That gets one hit. And misses. That's the problem with the Mistrals. If it doesn't hit both missiles, it's not particularly good. And yeah, Leopard 2's falling back. No auto cannons here, so that bat could also do a decent chunk of damage. And the Panther's also swinging in. That's the uh, Commando Marine. Oh, 10 RC is sneaking around, and those Falska Megat are just too deep in the forest to see anything. And that's just sitting there for fun, I guess. Oh, Rifleman, yeah, just getting chunked out by that Leopard 2. Say Putin should have sent his KFE 25s down this way, or his um, one of his Abrams. That would have helped. Ooh, Chimat's in the town, and that blaps at 10 RC. And then yeah, that 10 RC is just gonna pop all these guys. At least until the M1 Abrams get there. Maybe the 9040 will be able to work it over. It's not it's not the greatest auto cannon just because it has a low rate of fire, but. Yeah, like, it does that to light armor. It's, it's like a less extreme martyr, too. Uh, in terms of map position, it's kind of equal, but the thing to remember is that there's more points to be had on this bottom part of the map than on the top part. And the fact is, especially, it's just not very easy to push to the other opponents spawn from the top map. On the hotel side you have the top part of the map, you have you have to cross bridges, which is pretty obnoxious to do. And then for Echo you have to cross this wide open field, which is easier to do than the bridges, but still not the easiest thing to do if it's defended. Oh, Felsky Mager are working over the Jaeger. Leopard 2's. Got the shenanigans. One-on-one, yeah, -on -one, a Leopard 2 will beat a M1 Abrams, but two Abrams versus a Leopard 2 is not great, especially with a Chew Mat whacking it. Oh, Martyr 2's adding its fire, and that's going to be trouble for those KFE 25s if they want to support the Rima. Or if they want to support the Sojourn Sui against the Rima, because once the Martyr 2 opens up on them, those KFEs aren't going to last long. Well, there go the Rima, but... Nope, the Mara 2 is just focusing on the Sochung suit right now. Might, uh, might not be able to draw line of sight on the KFEs. So yeah, those KFEs are just wrecking those commandos. Or Commando Marine, to be specific. 
Oh, I don't want to just move them around by the looks of it. Oh, now they're going at the Panzer Grenadier, but the Marta 2 is opening up. Oh, and he gets hit by the Chumat. So now this KFVs are going to have a field day. Especially when you have a 3 stat you're just going at it. Here the Reem are pushing in, the Falsy Mager, oh they're caught out in the open, that's not good. Oh and the Leclerc is moving up, so that's going to be able to rock an M1 Abrams like nobody's business. Oh, RBS-90 sitting out there too. So yeah, Putin's basically lost India. And he doesn't actually have a lot of defending hotel, that could be trouble for him. Oh, still has those in the middle. Is he going to try and sneak the 10RC through the river or something? That would be funny if he managed to succeed with that. Is this amphibious? Yes, it is. Oh. Oh, there's a little gap between the forest and the smoke that the Abrams is sitting in. And, oh, looks like the Leopard 2 no longer has a line of sight on it. M1. Ooh, fire computer reset on the Leopard 2, but it still hits. That's one of the places where the M1 aim is really a disadvantage against the Leopard 2 is 13 AP, 15 frontal armor versus 16 AP, 15 frontal armor. Leopard 2 can engage the Abrams at max range, Abrams has to close to range. Not to mention the fact that the Leopard 2 outranges it by one tick, which means it actually effectively has 17 compared to the Abrams 13. Oh, Tanner, he's gonna die. Yep. Oh, so much for that plan from Putin, whatever he's trying to do. Oh, he is capping chart. He's gonna get that plus two. Don't know if that's the wisest move, considering the fact that Hotel is currently in danger. Hammer release amphibious? Yes, they are. France has a lot of amphibious stuff. Oh, and Putin. Oh. That's not hopping in the buildings, because of course. Oh, Gephardt's working over a panther. Belanger is deciding not to try and force the river. I don't, I don't know. I know that there's an RBS 90 squad sitting there waiting to die. Oh, and Ilt is coming up to Foxtrot. Looks like Belanger doesn't want Putin ticking at plus two. Sneezing, oh dear. Oh, I'm on 1383s of riflemen moving through the forest. Uh, depending on how they engage, those M1 13A1s and the Jaeger, those guys could come out on top if they're concentrated. Oh, M1 versus 10RC. Oh, and Rim 85 coming through the forest. That could be trouble. But then again, Poon also has a lot of stuff up and through here. And he does have a Jupiter on the way to resupply that tree map. He'll probably fix up these guys as well. Oop, 10RC came to the wrong neighborhood. Oh wow, the tree map missed. Oh, something happened. Somebody got bombed. I guess a plane got shot down in the process. Two bombs. Oh, that probably, that seems like a fighting falcon. That probably got shot down by the tar Mirage 2000. Oh, Kepford's pulling back and forth. Yeah, Leopard 2 is coming through. Oh, Putin sending his M113s ahead of his rifle. You kind of want to do it the opposite way, but whatever he wants to do. 
He's probably not expecting contact, though. And that Jupiter got drained pretty quickly. Oh, the both of those got pretty shot up. Oh, yep, there goes 1M113. Got double tapped by the Jaeger. Oh, RBS blew up something. Probably the T20 that was there. And the 9040 is moving up, and that's going to put some fire into the Commander's Para. Oh, rifleman going out at the Jaeger. And 113 still booking it. Oh, RBS is taking a shot. Delivered two. Does it? Uh, nope, of course. Oh, and a Peace Resin 2 gets a five point metal box. Yeah. And that got hit by the Mr. Which is now out. And yeah, the RDS 56 just keeps dunking at shots in Leopard 2 because it keeps reversing back into the forest. Some good micro from, uh. Whatchamacallit? Belanger. It looks like that's adding its fire against those Jaeger. Oh, now the M113 is engaging. Yeah, they're both distracted with the riflemen, so they're not using their Panzerfaust. However, a single M130, yeah, there we go, takes one hit. And two hits. <coughs> and Bonavis is leaving all these guys here. I think he, maybe we could have done, yeah, there we go, there comes an Iltis for India. Get that plus two. Maybe he should have relocated his clear down through into Delta with some guys. And, you know, went through Delta. If he could do that fast enough, he would have been able to cut off Poon's reinforcements into Alpha. Uh, that being said... Oh, yeah, Poon does have a CV on the way to Alpha, it looks like they're... Or, presumably Alpha for the plus two. Nope, Caesar is opening up. Yes, it is. Trying to get the CV in Charlie, presumably. Or counter battery, the mortar. I don't. I don't know. Nope, and K1. That's a solid medium tank right there. It's an M1 IP Abrams, but with a better gun. Or conversely, it's a M1 A1 with a worse gun. You know, however you want to look at it. I guess. Another non on Shiki, I guess he's going to put up in there, or he could put in the town. You know, whatever floats his boat, I suppose. And that's kind of clever of Putin putting his command infantry there, because most players would not think to go for there. They'd either go for, the, you know, in there or in here, if they're trying to snipe a CV. And there you go, Putin has the plus two. He's at 42 to zero. Oh. He's relocating his command infantry. I guess he wants it in the building. Oh, I guess he's not happy with where it is. Better floats his boat. And there's plus two. So that's going to be just a little temporary one until the Iltis gets into India. However, and then here's where the advantage of doing the push on the bottom part of the map comes in is now once uh, Boulanger gets India, Putin can tell, cap Delta for the plus one. However, Boulanger has enough of a position in Alpha that he could counter cap it with his own CV. Uh, I don't know how well that would work for him because it would be pretty obvious where it is. You know, it'd either be there or there. However, since Belanger does have his reinforcement route right there, it's, he can hold on to Alpha. Oh, well, he ho could hopefully he'll hold on to Alpha. Especially since Poon is a mechanized deck, so it is going to take him a while to get, you know, his reinforcements from Golf to Alpha. Oh, don't need to zoom in that far. Oh. 9040 with an RBS and some more Rifleman 90. Looks like Poon wants to get a good flank position here. Especially if you can get their RBS in there, or even in here. Because it's here, he can then influence, you know, the Leopard 2 and whatnot in here. And if it's over here, then he can influence the reinforcements. 
And we got K1 going after level 2. K, they both got a shot on each other, but K1 is... Same AP, but the K1 is a little bit tougher. I think there's a rate of fire difference as well. 9 versus... Oh, they both have 9 rounds a minute. Ooh, those Faust, you may have just been... They've gone for a lovely little walk, and now they're almost at these buildings here, which is going to be potentially pretty handy. Oh, especially if that Amex 10 RC drives past that road, is probably going to pop by those Falcon Jaeger. 60% accuracy and miss. Well, actually, it's not even more accurate. However, 10 rounds a minute means they do reload pretty quickly, and 90% accuracy they hit. Now, if Poon wanted, he could basically fast move it. If he had something readily available, he could fast move it down that road and get into. Echo, but now, uh, whatchamacallit, Belanger is now wise down to the Faust Commander there, so he now has his Commando pair on the way. And another 10 RC. And Caesar is going for the Führungs group by the looks of it, and it's getting pretty close. He has the right general ballpark. Open an Iltis, I'm guessing that's for Delta, so yeah, Putin's gonna get that plus one ticking. Poon's going for Delta, a good place for that Iltis would be kind of like in here-ish. Because then that means if the Stevian Alpha goes down due to a snipe, you can then quickly move the Iltis in there to maintain that plus... You know, to maintain the plus two from the Alpha. In theory. I don't, know. I don't really know how well that would work out in, in practice. Shimat goes down hard. That Leopard 2 is running low on ammunition and is being pretty shot up. Oop, but there's a 2A4 out. Which is better than any tank that Poon can bring to the table. We do have a fair bit of smoke as well. Looks like Putin's providing smoke for Belanger. Oh, K1 is pushed forward. Oh, Leopard 2 is moving to engage at close range. That could be pretty dangerous for that K1. If it... Oh, nope. Leopard 2 shoots the Nanayan Sunshiki. Oh, K1 donks a shot on Leopard 2, though. And gets... Right, they're both pretty low. Oh, but the RBS gets the kill on the Leopard 2. Now those 9040s are moving, and that's not good for Belanger. He's going to probably lose that forest. These are medium optics, aren't they? Yeah. And gone. And then, yeah, the Jaeger and the Mistral won't stand a chance. That's why he's just leaving the Mistral there instead of running it away. Oh, nope. Yep, he is running it. But, yeah, the 9040s will probably get it. Oh, M1's just fast move right into the Martyr. Oh, BBL just went out in the open. And gone, and then Jaeger took a shot. And they're getting chunked up pretty good. Yep. Oh, and then these guys have run into the Jaeger. Is this what? Yeah, five from armor. There we go. Yeah, riflemen were drawing fire. Oh, and then those riflemen just walk right into a Leopard 2A4. So yeah, Putin has the plus one ticking. It's at 85 to 0 so far. Oh, RBS pops the M113. <coughs> uh, that being said, uh, Belanger does have more Jaeger moving on to going down to the bottom part here, but I don't think they're going to make it. Or if they do make it, they won't be able to do much. Blanchard does have a pair of Lepertory 4s, which could be potentially quite dangerous for Putin, but Putin also has a lot of ATGMs. Ooh. Belsky Mayor went down over there. Fire Comp. Yeah, it's probably the VAB got him. Or helped to get him. Nope, Chumat's doing its thing. Ten uh, Putin is, yeah, he's pulling him back now. Is that a Hachikyushiki? Interesting. Oh, 
that's a lot of fire. Uh, Hatcher Kiyoshiki is something I want to like. I like it has a decent bit of armor. You know, four front, three side. And the auto cannon seems like it'd be okay-ish against other light armor. Uh, against infantry, it doesn't seem like it'd be too good though. But then the Geomatis is just garbage. Oh, but it hit. Yeah, because of the, uh, act, the whatchamacallit, the, the veteran seat bonus is definitely helping that out. Uh, actually, the autocannon seems to be okay-ish against infantry in the open, at least. Definitely better than a Bushmaster. Bushmaster one, to be specific. And it's 70 kilometers hour. It's decent enough, but it's just... It has no place in a general deck. You have better choices for blue dragons. Uh, for Japan, a general deck, um, maybe. But it definitely, in a mech deck, it's okay. Nope, oh, a pair of Mirage 2000s now. And the Caesar is because he's going for the ATGMs. Trying to get the RBSs. He does have a decent number of guys. Don't know if it's going to be enough to get back into Alpha. Or to get back into Alpha and hold in Alpha. Rima are going to be. Yeah, they're going to have a bad day at the hands of those commandos. And then the mortar's falling on them. Oh, RBS missed. That's kind of what they do is miss. Oh, but it's moving, and ooh, big hit on the front. Not the most reliable ATG, but with 26 AP power, when they do hit, they hit. You know, you feel it when they hit. Oh, Leopard 2's out. Oh, but Chumat is about to happen to it. There it goes, one hit. And it's stopped. Yeah, it's just, just sitting there. Okay, now he's reversing it. Oh, Pen RC is going for a drive. I don't know where he's going to try and do that. Is he going to try and cross the bridge, or is he going to try and go over there? What's his plan? Oh, Commander's just walking all the way in. <coughs> nope, that tree mat's moving up. Caesar is doing a bit of work, but not a lot. Oh, Neiman just lost both of their transports and now that panicked them because they blew up right next to them. However, um, yeah, those guys are stunned. Oh, but the mortar's gonna help equal things out. Yeah, there goes one Rima. Oh, yeah. That's a combination of commandos being go and Belanger wins. Anyway, as I say, that's, that's a combination of commandos being really good for their price and um, just the transport's getting popped right next to the infantry always panics the infantry. And then the mortar also helped even it out. Anyway, Putin was victorious with 155 conquest points. Belanger's zero. General Belanger had 1,095 kills. Putin had 1,670 kills. Ah, uh, for that battle, how do I want to break it down? Um, I think this is just a classic case of you know, it's better to push the bottom top part of the map than the top because it's you have more points available to you in the bottom. You know, on the other side of the river. That's the big thing in this battle. Aside from that, uh, it's just well played from Putin. He made good use of fire support, you know, of what he had available to him. Uh, Belanger, he, you know, one of the advantages he had was, you know, mobility and heavy ar heavier armor, but he didn't really leverage either of them particularly effectively, in my opinion. That's what it seemed like to me. He left his Leclerc, you know, just sitting in India, which, you know, it, def it helped him take India, but after that, 
it was just useless there because Putin had no intention of trying to retake India, you know, because in order to do that, he had to cross bridges and trying to force a bridge crossing, especially again, across bridges is longer on this map. That's just a bad time waiting to be had. So instead, yeah, he just focused on the bottom part of the map where there's more points. Uh, so yeah, if Belanger maybe had repositioned his Leclerc, he might have done better. But then again, it was very fairly close in in Alpha where a lot of the fighting was, and that's where you know super heavies like Leclerc's tend not to be as good. But if it was you know supported with you know he had the Leopard twos and the two A fours eventually, that could have been very ample support for a Leclerc to do a good push, especially with proper recon to spot the ATGMs. But ultimately, you know it, it didn't happen. Uh, Sizeman has this. <coughs> uh, essentially, what happened though is Putin forced Belanger to engage in an infantry fight, and that's where you know a mech deck has the advantage over a general deck. Is you know, in an infantry grind, a mech deck's always going to win. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, that's just, yeah, well played to both players, um, and uh, yeah. I'm Xander Turan, and this was the first Dutch Exceptional Tournament Finals Round 1 or something. You guys have a lovely day.